sir. Yes. Oh, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, can you hear me? Yes. What can you all shut up for in that case? <laughs> Lord Lieutenant, Mr. Mayor, members of the Brassy family, and other distinguished guests, welcome to Wirral, and in particular, to the home of the most prolific builder of railways that the world has ever seen, Thomas Brassey. My name is David Allen, I'm Vice Chairman of Conservation Areas Wirral, and a self-confessed railway nut. The name of Brassey was brought into sharp focus for me when I was in Bucharest, of all places, a couple of years ago, as part of a UK delegation of railway restoration enthusiasts, helping some like-minded folk in Transylvania. Our host took us to see the city's railway museum, and then to a working shed where they dragged out their pride and joy a wood, a working, wood-burning steam locomotive. Naturally, we gave this wonderful machine a close inspection. I took a look at the builder's plate that was fixed to the front of the loco's cab, and the wording stunned me. It read, Canada Works, number 233, 1869, Birkenhead. I had traveled over 2,500 miles to a not very well uh, known country in Eastern Europe to find a locomotive that had been built not five miles from where I live. Uh, extraordinary. It must surely be the only brassy-built locomotive left in the world. Anyway, that's my brassy story. Uh, so before I hand you over to the Mayor of Wirral, Councillor Tony Smith, <coughs> may I just take this opportunity to thank Peel, who have been very helpful to this project. Not only have they made this location available for erecting the plaque, but they, have also, they also facilitated an inspection visit to the site a few months ago, uh, and we are very grateful to them for their assistance. So, ladies and gentlemen, it's now my pleasure to introduce you to the Mayor of Wirral, there we are, uh, <laughs> Councillor Tony Smith, to say a few words, and he will be followed by the Lord Mayor. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, first of all, um, uh, uh, welcome to the Lord, sorry, uh, welcome to the Lord Lieutenant and um, distinguished guests. Um, the story of uh, Thomas Brassey is a remarkable one in every way. He was born to farmer's son near Chester, and after schooling, he was apprenticed to a land agent and surveyor in Birkenhead, and spent time assisting Thomas Telford with the surveying of the road from Shrewsbury to Hollyhead. As time went on, Thomas opened up a brick and lime works in Birkenhead. Sorry about this. And it took out over the manager's job at the Storton Quarries. There he met George Stevenson, who encouraged him to go into railway building. Brassey was, a success, was so success, successful, and such was the reputation that he quickly attained that in only a few years he had railway building contracts on hand around the country from the south of England to Scotland. During the 1830s he built one third of the railways in this country. After spending an eight year period in France during the 1840s during which he built three quarters of the French railway system operating at that time, he returned to Birkenhead, teamed up with Sir Morton Petrel and Edward Betts, and opened up the Canada Works behind me. His first contract was to construct the 540 mile Grand Trunk Railway in Canada, which included a two mile bridge across the St. Lawrence River. The Robert Stevenson design bridge was manufactured at the Canada Works like a giant mechanical kit, taken over to Canada and erected on site. Railway building contracts followed on in India, Australia, Austria, Poland, Russia, Denmark, in fact in nearly every country in the world. An unbelievable one in 20 miles 
of the World Railways was constructed under Brassey's management. At its peak, Brassey was paymaster, and I think this is quite interesting, for 85,000 workers, mostly navvies, and included 1,600 workers here at the Canada Works. And that was a time of Birkenshead's history of full employment. He built local projects, including the Chester and Shrewsbury Station, the Runcorn Viaduct, the Seffen Mar Viaduct near Langothlin. Other than railways, he built the Birkenhead Docks, Barrow Docks, Victoria Docks in London, the Callow Docks in Peru, and even water supply and storage treatment plants in Rio de Janeiro and Calcutta. Sewers in London for Joseph Bazinget and the massive Thames embankment. As you can see, the list is endless. Thomas Brassey is an unsung hero and deserves to be officially recognised. I would like to think that with the unveiling of a blue plaque for him today, many more people will be familiar with his achievements and consider him to be one of Birkenhead's great heroes. Thank you. <clears throat> I would now like to invite the Lord Lieutenant to say a few words and perform the unveiling. Thank you, Chairman. That's, that's such great. This is the sort of occasion where you really need to have three hats. <laughs> I'll do my best. First of all, it's really an honour to be here today and to see some familiar faces. <laughs> and uh, um, this is a, such a worthwhile thing to achieve to get is such an important person who has uh, not performed up until now, has not been perhaps fully recognised. Um, you've heard already about uh, Thomas Brass's extraordinary uh, railway adventures and his time at the Canada Works, but I've been briefed on one aspect of his life which is seldom mentioned. Um, Brassy was involved in the Crimean War, and uh, in 1854, a report appeared in the London Gazette about the conditions of the 30,000 British troops uh, which they had to endure at the siege of Sastapol. And the country was horrified with the stories that came back from there. That period of history conjures up such things as the charge of the Light Brigade and the names of people like uh, Florence Nightingale, who set up hospitals to nurse the sick and wounded. But there's an equally important part of this story that the history books uh, seldom recall. The British Army and their French allies would have been defeated, but for the organising ability of Thomas Brassey, his engineers and navvies, and the facilities of the Canada Works here in Birkenhead. On the 30th of November, November 1854, Sir Morton Beto, MP, Brassey's partner, told the government that their company could overcome the supply problems by building a 40-mile railway from Balaclava uh, to all parts of the front at Sastapol. They would also do it at no profit to themselves from patriotic motives. At that time, troops in Sebastopol were fighting the Russians in wretched conditions, with thin clothing, few tents, and no fuel. Supplies could not be moved due to the atrocious winter road conditions. Some 8,000 men were in hospital, but within seven days of the approval to go ahead, Brassi had chartered nine ships, including the clipper Wildfire, and started loading railway lines and equipment on the West Float Bergen Head. Everything that was needed to build the railway was taken, as well as prefabricated wooden huts, stoves for 500 families, coal, horses, supplies, and of course, doctors and nurses. The fleet arrived early February 1855. The huts were erected, and the navvies worked day and night on the railway. In only six weeks, 40 miles of railway, including bridges, cuttings, and embankments, was completed. Quite unbelievable, isn't it? With 17 trucks moving desperately needed supplies to the front, by the end of March, a thousand tons of shot and shell were transported, and 3,600 tons of clothing, blankets, medical supplies, and of course, food. It's a shame there are no photographs, isn't it? 
which has been a wonderful sight. In September 1855, Sebastopol fell. The British army and their French allies were victorious, and the rest, as they say, is history. Such was the power and the skills of Thomas Brassey and his men that they became national heroes, and much praise was heaped upon the Birkenhead Company when they returned home. Many thousands of local people turned out to work. This example of civil engineers operating in a war zone was outstanding success prompted the formation in this country of what is now called the British Army's Royal Engineer Corps. I take my hat off to such a great man. I can't actually take one. <laughs> <laughs> and I have delighted to unveil this blue plaque as a commemoration to his memory and achievements. So now I will unveil the plaque. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's good.